right, good evening. It is the last Wednesday in June. We're running out of June. Uh, Sunday is the last Sunday. I just want to remind those of you listening that uh, the service for Karen's mom, Arlene, is at Roseberry Funeral Homes in Friendship on Saturday. The visitation starts at noon. Uh, visitation's from noon to two, and then the service is at two o'clock. And I uh, just encourage you, if you're able to make it, be there to be an encouragement to her. And then there's a luncheon after that at the uh, Arkdale Town Hall right on uh, Highway 21. So just wanted to remind everybody about that. Uh, Acts chapter 2, I uh, hope you're there. And uh, we're going to start off by reading, kind of going around the room and uh, for context, starting with verse 32 and reading through verse 41. So just to change it up, we'll start with William. We'll start on this side of the room. Uh, so Acts 2, verse number 32, and then right on around to uh, till we get to verse 41. So go ahead. This Jesus hath God raised up there, wherefore we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard it, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and the other apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. <coughs> and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that did gladly receive his word were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Okay, very good. Thank you. So in verse number 36, we kind of have the conclusion of Peter's sermon. And he wanted them to know that they had crucified, that God had made the one that they had crucified, both Lord, meaning Master, uh, sovereign, the one we have to bow down to, the, the judge, uh, made him both Lord and Christ. And of course, Christ is the anointed one. It's, it refers to the Messiah, the coming uh, king that the Old Testament prophets talked much about. And so that was kind of a, um, a convicting proclamation, kind of tied everything together. And then we've been looking at uh, numbers starting with verse 37 through 40, uh, I'm calling that the convicted are instructed. That's what happens. They are convicted. They're pricked in their heart. Uh, that means they were emotionally uh, pierced through. Uh, it wasn't just something that took place in their heads. Uh, they, were, they were impacted uh, in their minds, what they learned, but they were impacted in their hearts. They were confronted with what they had done and the gravity of what they had done. And, you know, just to imagine... The oh, this is this is a man that's uprising against Rome and going to get us into trouble and do you know cry out, crucify him? Let's get rid of this troublemaker and then have it really be dawn on you that we had a hand in killing God in the flesh, you know, and and so they were they were moved, they were convicted, and that's something. Uh, you know, and, and it's truth needs to be given, and truth was given, and Peter preached boldly and unashamedly, but God has to do the working in the heart, and God did do the working in the heart, and so much so that they were like, what? 
do we do? What are, what are we supposed to do? So um, it wasn't just their mind was instructed and their emotions were moved. It was, okay, we need to, we need to take action. We need to do something about it. What is it, Peter? Peter's doing talk. What is it that we need to do? And the first thing he's told, he tells them to do is repent. Repent. And I, we mentioned this last week, and I actually uh, brought it up on Sunday. It comes from the Greek word matano eo. Uh, it's a combination of two Greeks, Greek words, meta, uh, which means changed after, changed after being with. And I'm not sure if there's any Greek people listening, they're cringing over the way I pronounce this, but uh, noio, uh, which means think. And so the metanaeo, uh, combining the two, is to think differently after, or to after a change of mind. And again, it's, it's not just a change of mind. It also involves a sorrow over wrongdoing. Uh, Thayer's Greek lexicon, to change one's mind for the better, heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. Abhorrence is hatred. So uh, it's, it's uh, heartily change direction with a hatred for your past sins. There, there was a real recognition, a real sorrow. And, you know, like I mentioned Sunday, um, it's not repentance. When, when we think repentance, we hear repentance, we should think change in direction, change in thinking, but it's also a sorrow for wrongdoing. It's both of those things together. And, you know, I also mentioned this on Sunday, just feeling bad about sin and just saying, I'm going to turn over a new leaf to get my life together, doesn't save. A lot of people feel bad about sin. A lot of religions teach you to feel bad about sin. But then they teach you you need to change the way you live, and changing the way you live is going to get you to heaven. But the Bible doesn't teach that. It is repentance, but it is also faith in Christ. It is putting your faith and trust in Christ. It's, it's ceasing from counting on you and putting your trust in Christ. Um, here's a, a quote I gave you last week, and I just want to repeat that. A guy named Schnabel, uh, that exhortation to repent means here that the Jews in Jerusalem regret their involvement in the crucifixion of Jesus, that they confess their tragic sin, that they feel, they feel sorry for the rejection of Jesus, that they turn away from and change their former attitude concerning Jesus, and that they accept Jesus as the promised Messiah and risen and exalted Lord. And, and we see that in verse 36. Peter is really emphasizing, you know, you crucified him, uh, but just understand, the one you crucified, God has made him Lord, meaning master, and Christ, meaning the anointed one. He is the one that salvation is bound up in. He is the one. So they had to think differently, not just, oh, I did bad by crucifying. No, who is he? And what do you need to do in response? And that's why they need to repent, was to uh, embrace him. So they were told to repent. Next thing they're told to do is be Baptized. We're still in verse 38. Uh, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission. Remission is forgiveness. For the remission of sins. Again, we talked about this last time. I'd just like to uh, re-emphasize and repeat and hopefully sticks a little bit longer. First glance, you'd say, Wow. You have to be baptized in Jesus' name in order for your sins to be forgiven. That's what it sounds like at face value. And there are people that teach. That is what it teaches. So how do we, how do we answer 
that. I gave you a couple things last week. Anybody remember? Go ahead. If you get a speeding ticket, it wasn't meant that you had, or you, I don't know if you said ticket, but you said speeding, yeah, so it wasn't, it didn't mean that you had a ticket for speed. So that's the same thing. So four is you've already been saved, so now you're two, you can get baptized. Okay, good. Speeding, we, people get, if you get a ticket for speeding, it is not permission to speed. It is because it's on the basis of you were speeding. Being baptized for the remission of sins is not to get forgiven. It is on the basis that you have already been forgiven. Uh, another thing that is good to be reminded of is we know that baptism does not save from what example do we have that I mentioned last Jesus. Week? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, but another one. Thief on the cross. Thief on the cross. Thief on the cross. Jesus did not say, You're too bad. Uh, call for a priest, call for some water sprinkling to uh, you know, go today. join it. Jesus said today he he understood he was a sinner. He understood Jesus was not. He understood he could not save himself. He understood that Jesus was going to a kingdom. He asked Jesus to remember me when you get there. And Jesus said, today you will be there. There was no baptism involved in it. So uh, that's a way to uh, answer that particular uh, people suggesting that there, you got to be baptized to be saved. No, you don't. Uh, and that's... Uh, but, but even when they say that, they don't... Even if they use that, they don't get the part before that about repentance. Repentance, so yeah. I mean, the baby's never had a chance yeah. to repent. Yeah. So. Yeah. But they're not condemned. How can a baby so repent? So, that brings us to... Yeah. And this is kind of where we ended last week. Um, if baptism does not wash away sin, and if baptism doesn't save, same thing, said differently, uh, why should we be baptized? Well, three reasons. One is we looked at last week because uh, Jesus was. So let's go back there again to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Uh, it's it's interesting. Look at uh, we'll we'll get to um, we'll get to verse seventeen and or thirteen in a little bit. But uh, look at verse number five. So Matthew chapter three, verse number five. Then went out to him, and that's John the Baptist. Uh, went out to him in Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about uh, Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So they were, they were admitting uh, John's baptism was different than Christian baptism. Okay, it's important to remember that. John baptized uh, with uh, a, a different way for a different purpose. But notice what they, they were confessing their sins. They were admitting their sinfulness. It wasn't to get washed. It was they were, they were identifying with their sinfulness. Uh, verse number seven, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Don't just say you feel bad about your sin. <laughs> show proof, show proof of repentance. Uh, in verse nine, think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. We have our religion. We have our great, 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 great ancestor, Abraham. And Jesus said, don't say that. Uh, I'm able to take stones and make children of Abraham. Uh, end of verse nine. So the main reason I have us come here, verse number 13 is then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Uh, John, of course, understood that um, 
we know that they're, what's their relationship between these two? Brothers. Huh? Brothers? Brothers? No. Brothers in Christ, but yeah. there's a different relationship. Mm -hmm. They're cousins. cousins. Yeah. They're cousins. And uh, they're actually six months apart. John is six months mm -hmm. older than Jesus. But John knew who Jesus was. John knew who Jesus, you know, where Jesus came from. And uh, that's why he said, I have a need, verse number 14, to be baptized of you. You come unto me. <laughs> uh, we got this backwards. Jesus said, no, we need to do it this way uh, as an example to fulfill all righteousness. It, it doesn't mean uh, Jesus became righteous at this moment. Jesus always was righteous. They were, they were doing what God-fearing people did at that time. Remember, Jesus was... was uh, circumcised the eighth day, there was a sacrifice made for him when he was 40 some days old, and so that he was following the law. Uh, John baptized him, verse number 16, Jesus, how old was he? 30. He was 30. He's 30 years old. Uh, you know, if that, again, I repeat myself, but certainly shows us that if <coughs> Baptism was urgent to happen as an infant. Why wasn't Jesus baptized as an infant? Uh, it was the beginning of his public ministry. Uh, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Sounds like he was under it, <laughs> not sprinkled with it. Uh, came up out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we, we saw in Acts that God uh, confirmed Jesus by miracles and signs and wonders. And here we kind of have the very beginning of, I, I'm pretty sure this is the first voice people heard from heaven about Jesus. This is my beloved son. He's starting his public ministry. And from this point, you know, and isn't it, isn't it interesting? I mean, we, we know about Jesus when he's 12. He's left behind in Jerusalem, right? When he's 12, talking to the doctors. And they're like, what? man, this kid's a child of genius. Uh, and his parents are worried. And what are you doing? How, why did you treat us like this? And he says, don't you know, I got to be about my father's business. But 18 years go by. Nothing, nothing. We know absolutely nothing from the Bible between the age of 12 and now he's 30. 18 quiet years. And now he begins his public ministry and he is baptized as an example. If you're in Matthew 3, turn to Matthew chapter 28. So reason number one we should be baptized is because Jesus was Matthew 28, verse number 18. So we, we need to be reminded that Jesus is now resurrected. He is now raised from the dead. He is alive. Uh, they have seen him. They've gotten past the, uh, we don't believe it. We've seen a ghost stage to, okay, we get it. Uh, we get it. We got it. Uh, he was with them. 40 days teaching them. And so now he has, he gives them the marching orders, uh, his parting words, and says to them, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach. I uh, heard me say this before. The teach word there is disciple. Uh, it's not teach as in instruct, as I'm doing now. It is go and make disciples out of the nations. So not only share the gospel with them, but help them grow. Teach them the importance of putting God first, uh, being disciples. We uh, have a lot of people that are in name Christians, 
but not true followers of Christ. And so the, the Jesus command here is not just be not just instruct, but go disciple them, baptizing them. So here the, the, the command to baptize is from Jesus. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, so that the Trinity baptize them in the name of all three, teaching them to, so now this is instructing, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus is, Jesus told them, and thankfully, they obeyed, and people after them obeyed, and people after them obeyed, because the only reason we are sitting here is because people obeyed this command to go and make disciples and baptize them, and then teach them to do the same thing. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. That's what we are to be doing. Uh, our our responsibility are from Christ. Uh, his desire is that we share the gospel with people. Uh, we, and, and sometimes that's inviting the church, and sometimes it's giving a track, and sometimes it's, you know, however that looks, but the goal is that the church is not one pastor goes everywhere. It's all of us go everywhere. It's yeah. all of us be used. And so that's Jesus' uh, method, his, his marching order. Um, I think I shared in, uh, it seemed like in Sunday school, maybe not too long ago, uh, when I was a, a recruiter for the military, uh, I'm one guy trying to find people to enlist in the military. And they're like, uh, you know what? If all 100 of you that come to one weekend a month drill, if you all are trying to find somebody, then just think of how much more effective it's going to be. And then you're giving me names to try and enlist in the National Guard. Well, that's the same kind of concept that Jesus uh, had in, in mind here. So um, we should be baptized. Number one, Jesus was. Number two, he commands his followers to do that. And then uh, number three, and we're in Matthew, so go towards the back of the Bible more to Romans. Uh, Romans chapter... Six. So after Acts comes Romans. So if you want to find your way back to Acts, maybe that might be the easiest for you. But Acts, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter six. Uh, baptism is a picture. It is. It is a way we can outwardly demonstrate what has taken place in our heart. It's an outward demonstration of I am a believer, I am born again, I have trusted Christ, I want people to know that, and so I am baptized as a public proclamation of what has happened inside of me. Uh, it, it is, that's one of the reasons we do it, but um, there's, based on these verses, uh, it's important that we understand the what that means from uh, I believe a commitment level uh, when the the early church when Acts was going on they were under persecution so to be baptized was to put a target on your back okay you you were you were in essence you were and, and we'll use the terminology that it has here. They, they were dying to self. They understand that they could be surrendering their very life by taking a stand for Christ. Uh, that's, that's what was happening at that time. And so I tend to probably go extreme on the baptism side from wanting people to really uh, understand, not only am I saved, but I'm, I'm saying, look at verse number four, um, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. There, there is a spiritual baptism where God does stuff that we don't even understand. 
Uh, but I really think that the picture here is we, so we're buried with him by baptism into death, and that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So spiritually, spiritually speaking, with you not having any clue of how it works, when you are truly born again and you're truly trusting Christ and Christ only, God counts you as in Christ and buried with Christ and you are now a new creature in Christ. There's, there's that, you know, I, I refer to this often, the exchange. Our sin is put on Christ. Christ's righteousness is imputed. It, it, it's imputed. It's credited to us. There is a spiritual thing that happens, and God counts us as one with Christ. Uh, we died with Christ. And we're going to be raised with him spiritually. And that makes your head. Spiritually, Ephesians 2, we are already seated in the heavenlies. We're, we're already there. A lot of times we're living in the, with the dogs and the fleas instead of, wow, I have been raised to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We, we are not, you know, there's different aspects, for lack of a better word, of salvation. Um, you know, I'm... Where we are saved, we are being saved, we're, we're saved past, uh, we're declared legally right with God, we're being saved, we're being sanctified, we're being changed, we will be saved in the future, we won't have a sin nature, we'll be glorified. And so there's th those three different aspects, uh, so to speak. But God counts us is already there. That, that's why, you know, the, the more I study the Bible and the more you really understand salvation, the more difficult it is to understand how can you believe you can lose your salvation? You're, you're, you're unified with Christ. You're counted as seated in the heavenlies. You're a new creature. You're adopted. But your sin, which Jesus died for, can undo all that. How does it, it doesn't compute with my mind? It's and so uh, we are we're, we're spiritually buried, but I think and, and so that's what happens inwardly that God does. But this baptism as a picture of I am dying, I am burying me. I am going under the water, and I'm saying, "Okay, I'm coming out of that water." And I'm, and, and it should be, and it is something that happens before, you know, that that heart change uh, happens before that, or it should. Um, I want to baptize people that say, "I want to die to me, and I want to live for God," because I believe that's what the picture is buried with him in the likeness of his death, verse 5, and then raised to walk, verse 4, in the newness of life. Does that, uh, does that make sense? Did, no, hopefully I explained that um, well enough. But it, it's not, and, and the other thing, and um, when Elise and her mom and dad were baptized, we, we got together quite a bit. We, I mean, I think we met 12 times or 10 times or something, you know, and I, I enjoyed those afternoons at your, your parents' house. And, um, you know, the, the main thing, especially in this uh, part of the country where we live, when you have uh, a lot of Lutherans and a lot of Catholics that grow up thinking baptism and salvation are tied I, I go to great pains to make sure people understand baptism has nothing to do with it. The thief on the cross went to the same heaven that we're going to be in, and he wasn't baptized. And, you know, it, it, it is not Christ plus baptism. It is baptism is after, and based on Romans 6, I think it's not just, I'm a... I've been born again, I've accepted Jesus, I want him, you know, I, I acknowledge him as my Savior, I want all of you to know that, but it's also, you know what, I want him 
to lead in my life. I want him to run my life. I want to let you know I am dying to me. I am living for Christ. I want you to hold me accountable. Uh, it's part of church membership, and we'll get to that when we get further in. Um, actually, the next verse or two. Okay, back to uh, Acts chapter 2. So you're in Romans. Now you can go back to the front of the Bible a little bit. Um, I want to I wanna finish up verse 38 and 39, and just so Ron can stop accusing me of only getting through one verse. <laughs> okay, verse... 20, uh, um, I'm sorry, verse 38, Acts 2, verse 38, end of the verse. So, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for or on account of, on the basis of remission of forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, again, we can read that and we can say okay if I repent and I trust Christ in order for me to get the gift of the Holy Spirit I have to be baptized because if I'm not baptized I won't get the gift of the Holy Spirit because that's what it seems like it says um, to which I reply that is not what it says uh, turn to Acts chapter 10 uh, and we'll get to this, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I want to, I just want to show you, so you're in Acts 2, turn to Acts chapter 10, where we see you do not need water baptism in order for the Holy Spirit to come and indwell you. Uh, and Acts chapter 10 is a, a wonderful mm -hmm. chapter, but look at verse number 44. So Peter, Peter is speaking. Peter is speaking to Cornelius. Wow. He's speaking to God-fearing Gentile. He was he was speaking to someone who we would call religious, and uh, that's the first part of Acts 10. But notice what it says, Acts 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them, which heard the word. And they have the circumcision, so there are Jews that are there, believing Jews which are there with Peter. They are astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, languages, again, uh, their Italian, uh, magnify God, with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, so here, the picture is, these people heard Peter preach, and we were, um, I mean, he has a message just like we looked at in Acts 2, um, and we'll, we'll get to it, but the main point is, they heard what Peter said, they responded to what Peter said, the Holy Spirit came in them and on them, and then Peter says in verse 47, can any man forbid water? that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. So plainly says, they got the gift of the Holy Spirit before they were baptized in water. So Acts 2.38 is not saying you have to repent and be baptized. You have to repent, but you don't have to be baptized to get your sins forgiven. We're baptized because our sins are forgiven, and we receive the Holy Ghost based on salvation in Christ, not on being water baptized. All right, back to Acts 2 again. I should be telling you to mark it, sorry. Um, so verse number 39 I'll read 38 just for continuity. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, because of, or on account of, the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, the first part of that verse, he talks about the promise 
being unto you. Uh, remember earlier in verse 17 and 18, he was quoting Joel, and Joel said the Spirit's going to come, the Spirit's going to be poured out on all flesh, and so he's alluding to that. Um, is even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, I think we, we need to, you know, I, I bring it up from time to time, but um, God draws us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. Uh, we have to respond to that. But the Holy Spirit does the convicting. Uh, verse number 40. And with many other words. So again, we don't have the whole thing that he said to them. After they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? We don't have everything that he said because he says, with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, uh-oh, save yourself from this untoward generation. So again, we have this, seems to be a contradiction. Peter is saying, save yourself from this generation. Well, you can argue and say, well, Get away from those people. Get, you know, get, get away from all these people that won't admit that they crucified Christ. Uh, save yourself. Who can save themselves? Nobody. Nobody. So how do we answer this? Well, here's, um, you know, again, I sound like a broken record, I know sometimes, but uh, there's either an understanding issue or... A translation issue and what we have here really is is a translation issue uh, if we look at this in English save yourself uh, the verb is active okay again I, I'm not doing this to be confusing but uh, active means in the activity of be saved from this so sometimes in the in the Greek we and again I don't do that. I do it to help clarify things. And here in the Greek, it really is helpful. Is that uh, the verb is passive? We can't save ourselves, but we can be saved by repenting and trusting Christ. And so that's what he's saying: is be saved by doing what I just told you. Uh, repent, trust Christ. Um, all right. So God does the saving, we do not, but we do need to repent. We need repentance and faith. So we're going to start next week with verse number 41. Uh, so read over 41 through 47, not guaranteeing we'll get through all those, but we will start on 41. We will not be on 38 next week. So any questions or um, comments, anything about this? Or... Go ahead. Uh, you said there were three things. Three reasons to be baptized. Three reasons to be baptized. Yep. Um, one was Jesus was. That one I got, but I think The the second one was because Jesus part of his commands to the church was to be baptized. Okay. So it's the, the marching orders of the church. And then the third one is it's an outward demonstration of what's happened inward. It's letting fellow believers know that we identify with them and we identify with Christ. And so it's a it's an outward demonstration of inward. You know, I joke all the time. I can't look at someone's pupil and see a L or a S. I can't see a S for saved, you know, and a boy, that'd be pastors really looking in my eyeballs today. <laughs> you know, I, I but in in uh, you know I, I had a conversation with Elise not too long ago. I don't want to embarrass her, but um, I, I loved her answer. The only person I know who's really saved is me because I don't know if my kids, I want to know and I want to, but you know, and I see things in their life. But at the end of the day, I can't pronounce anyone saved. No. Uh, but I sure am encouraged when people grow and change and have a heart for God and, yes. you know, you see, you see so, fruit. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, the only one I really can know for sure about is me. And the only one you really can know for sure about is you. But it is an outward, it's letting people know that, hey, I identify with Christ. I truly am. Uh, in my heart, I am, I, I know I have trusted Christ and I am not ashamed or afraid to let you know. And I want to
identify with other believers. Uh, and so that's uh, the, the third reason. It's an outward uh, demonstration. So go ahead. What was the third one? Because I'm. Uh, it, what I did is. So um, Jesus was baptized. Yes. It's Amen. part of the marching orders of the church. And then outward demonstration of what's happened inward. So Romans 6, it's an it's a outward demonstration. It's letting others know that we identify with Christ. When I got baptized over in New Lisbon, I felt that I did die because the pastor held me under a little longer <laughs> than normal. Do you do that? A long time. <laughs> well, it just no. seemed like, you know, <laughs> you only have to go down and under and come back up. But you got to get your nose Even under. Right? But I just got, you know, I had that feeling, am I going to die? Or am I dead? You're supposed already? to die yourself. <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen. Spiritually, not, not yes. literally. Yeah, not, right. not physically. Spiritually. <laughs> you know, nice to brush it. I hope he's not watching this tonight. To get you to talking? He's on my Facebook. <laughs> he's waiting for the bubbles to stop. Right. You know All right. He, he baptized his two sons too. Sure. We were three of us all, all you know. I didn't remember him holding <laughs> them down that long. Well, maybe you were too buoyant. I guess that could have been. been. I was heavier than too buoyant. All right. Anybody else with a question? <clears throat> Comment. Ron, do you want to close prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being able to come here on Wednesday nights and go over what you've written to us in the Bible and have it explained because sometimes we just have a hard time with it, Lord. And it does us good to go over this and sort through it and understand it by the time we leave. And if we don't, the pastor will help us. And we thank you for that. We thank you for everything that you do. And your watch care over us. And I ask that you give everybody journey mercies on the way home tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, those of you who are listening online now or later.